Hello, everyone, again, and welcome to New Books that just joined us. We want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, to the private message person, uh, thank you. That's great. And uh, this is Online Transit Central. Melissa Armo is here today with us from the Talk Switch, and she'll be presenting promptly in just six minutes. Six minutes, everyone. Thank you, and welcome. Hello, everyone, again, and welcome. We start promptly in just three minutes. Melissa Armour is here with us today from the Stock Switch. She'll be presenting promptly in just three minutes. So thank you, everyone, again, and welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome. New folks who've joined, uh, JREH, KY, and others. This is Online Trader Central. Welcome, Jerry P., Albie, 
uh, Michael of California, uh, Franco, if that's pronounced correctly, Larry, JR, and others. This is online at Trader Central. Welcome, Dennis, and everyone. It's about time to begin. Let me see if I can round up the uh, percussion section here. Okay, I can find the uh, the drummers. Drummers, are you ready? <laughs> okay, and now cue the trumpets. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter from the stockswitch.com. Please welcome Melissa Armo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's Monday. Monday. New start to a new month this week. August 1st is, is on uh, Thursday. And here we are in full swing of earnings season. And I love doing these webinars at Online Trader Central because I always get a good group of people. So thank you so much for coming today, everyone. The topic for today's webinar is trade your way out of debt, trade to change your life. And it's written by me, Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. And if you'd like more information after the webinar, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Also go to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and add me there. And I also have started a new page on Pinterest uh, called Stock. I'm going to start to pin charts on different categories of charts of stocks and trades that I do. I'm kind of excited about it. So welcome. Today we're going to talk about two things, debt and trading. So let's start out with the one first. Do you feel, maybe right now or at some different time in your life where you felt like this, like you're in a black hole with debt? This is a big, big problem right now for people in, in the world, not just the United States, but also the world because a lot of people are in debt and there's a lack of ability to be able to refinance debt or even lower debt for people because banks are tending not to want to work with uh, people right now, lowering their interest rates because of the economy. So you may be in a black hole with it and trying to figure out, gosh, you know, how am I going to get out of this situation? Well, you know, no one can blame anyone for circumstances. You know, you're having fun. You're enjoying life. This is life and how it goes. You're spending money. Everything's great. You could have been spending money maybe even five, six, seven years ago before the financial crisis that happened in the world. And all of a sudden, crap, everything goes kapoop. All your interest rates go up in your credit cards and your lines of credits, maybe even have lines of credits or credit cards, and they've all been lower now because of the banking crisis that happened several years ago. And now all of a sudden you feel like you're upside down and everything was going great and you weren't upside down at all. And all of a sudden, because of things that have happened in the world, now this is where it stands and you need to get out of the situation. How are you going to do it? Well, let's look at a couple statistics. But first, let's look at the annual household income in the U.S. And I know not everybody here lives in the United States, but this is still a good statistic to look at. While inflation-adjusted real household income had been increasing almost every year from 1945 to 1999, it has since been flat and even decreased. I, I believe it's actually decreased recently. Uh, the U.S. median household income fell from 50, roughly about 51,000 in 2010 to 50,500 in 2011. And in many places, it's actually less than that. Extreme poverty in the United States, meaning households living on less than $2 per day before government benefits doubled from 1996 to 1.5 million households in 2011. And again, this is after the whole banking collapse, including 2.8 million children. This is a terrible situation to be in. And of course, you know, how are we going to deal with this? Well, let's look at the overall total American household debt overview. The average U.S. household credit card debt stands at roughly $15,325. I actually think this is very low as, as well, but we'll, we'll, I'm going to go through and use these statistics because they're real. And the result of a small number of deeply indebted households forcing up the numbers. Based on an analysis of Federal Reserve statistics and other government data, the average household owes a little over $7,000 on their credit cards, unsecured. Looking at only indebted households, the average outstanding balance rises to 15000 Again, that 15000 So here are statistics, trends, studies, and methodology behind the average U.S. household debt. And this is as of July 2013, so this is pretty current. It's saying the average credit card debt is 15000 I think that's low, okay? But we're going to use that number. Average mortgage debt, 147 That sounds about right. And average student loan debt, 32000 give or take. So... You know, in order to reduce household debt, what are you going to do? Well, what are your options? 
Household debt can be challenging to reduce, particularly in the current interest rate environment and the way that banks are not wanting to lend money to people, particularly unsecured. And even if you want to refinance, you don't have equity in your home, the bank won't lend you money to refinance or even do a line of credit. When years ago, and I know all this because I did mortgages for 17 years through all the thing before I started trading. At that time, banks were willing to do lines to consolidate unsecured debt on homes. They don't want to do that now. In fact, the LTV ratio for even getting a line of credit secured is so low. At some banks, it's 70%. And most mortgages, people owe more than 70% LTV. So what are your options? Number one, paying down debt over time from extra income you might make or accumulated savings if available. Or debt write down or refinancing via negotiation, bankruptcy or government bailout. Not a great option, but it is an option. Three, inflation. Well, that's not a great option either. So what's the best option? The best option is number one, to pay down the debt over time. So Someone said to me, well, how, what are you doing a webinar about this stuff? And what makes you qualify, Melissa, to do a webinar about this? I'll tell you what makes me qualified. I've spent 17 years in the banking industry, and I also now am a trader. So I understand the system. In fact, I personally have worked the system to my advantage through the, over the last few years because I know how to do it so well. And I actually have the ability to be able to lend money to people when I worked in banking. I was a loan officer, and I also uh, was a branch manager for years. So I spent 17 years in the banking industry and understand how debt works and how banks look at debt and charge for the cost of debt. I also am a full-time trader now for over five years. So banks look at debt to income ratios in a very, very, very strict manner. All right. Even more strict than they ever did before, which they used to be strict. Now it's even worse. Okay which is why it's important to review your debt and find a way out of it. Because let me tell you something, it's not going to get any better. Banks are never going to let up in the way that they used to before. They're just never going to do it. So some people choose bankruptcy. This isn't really the ideal option, okay? Because it's kind of like giving up. And, and that ruins your credit. And the thing is, in this day and age, credit is everything. Years and years and years ago, when I did mortgages, we were doing loans for people with like credit scores in the 530s. They won't touch that with a 10-foot pole now. You now need a 680 credit FICO score or more to even buy a home. And this is even an FHA loan. So quite frankly, you know, in this day and age, credit is everything to get any type of loan that you ever may want or need. And so you've got to do everything you can to keep your credit intact. And if you're making your minimum payments on your credit cards, that's all well and good, but how are you getting ahead? It's hard. So how can you get out of debt? How can you take the money you have now to get out of debt? There has to be some kind of plan of action. Otherwise, it just goes on and on and on, and the banks charge daily per diems on everything, really. So you might have money, but not enough money to get out of debt. A lot of people do have savings, all right? They have 401ks, they have money in the bank, they do. And they just don't have enough to totally pay everything off. So they're making their minimum payments, but not really getting anywhere. And it feels like a prison. It feels like a prison because you pay out all this money every single month. You get your statement. You just pay your payments, whatever they are, $300 a month on one card, $200 a month on another card. You get the statement every month. It never goes down. And you feel like you're in a trap, in a prison of debt. And it's like you're saving pennies, extra money every month, whatever you're making, while you're paying dollars. And it's a debt trap. It really, really is set up as a debt trap. And the only ones that are really making out are the banks. Because time is not on your side with debt. It keeps racking up and racking up. So you've got to get to the point where you are ready to figure something out, a plan, something to do, to take action to improve your situation. Because as time goes on, like I said, it starts to accrue and add up. So what is the answer? Change. Change what you are doing. Find a different way and a fresh perspective. How? Learn how to trade the stock market. And this is what I personally have done. There is always a way out of debt, and there is an alternative to giving up bankruptcy and failure. The alternative is your path to success in the stock market. Trading the stock market can be very lucrative. Trading is a great vehicle to earn more money faster than saving or working at a job. And if you want to trade and work at a job, you can do that too. You could do both. You could trade in the morning for an hour or so a day and then go on to a job. This year, 2013, it is time for you to create the life you want. And it's hard to have the life you want if you're in debt. It is time for you to become debt free. This is real freedom. And it's time to learn how to trade to create the life you want. 
So learning how to trade really can change your life because it can help you find a way to earn more money than you would at your regular job and get out of debt, which, which is a great thing. So one idea is to take the money you have and learn how to use it to earn more wisely. So let's just look at a situation scenario. And I used an average of 25,000 because I think that 15,000 average credit card unsecured debt is low. All right, I think that's low, but I'm gonna use 25. It's an easy round number. So let's just say you have 25,000 in credit card debt and an approximate interest rate of 9.99% and I'm being very conservative. Most rates are very much higher than that. But I'm, I'm conservative saying this person has good credit. All right, this person has good credit. They have a $25,000 unsecured line. Their monthly payments would be approximately $600 a month. Let's just say you have a grand, okay, in savings, in the bank, in a regular job. And you're paying $2,500 a year in interest on that $25,000. Okay, follow me here. Minimum payments per year total $7,200, 600 times 12. So you're paying out $7,200 and you're making that $600 payment with your monthly income. So you're carrying it. You're carrying it. You're not, you know, underwater with it. You're, you're keeping your credit up. Everything's fine. But how the heck can you get out from under it? You're not paying down any of the principal. So... Two years go by. After two years of payments of the minimum balance, you've paid down no principal. And you've paid out approximately $5,000 in interest. And you're out $14,400, $7,200 a year in monthly payments to carry the load, which you're paying with your job, let's say. So you still have the $8,000 in your savings sitting there earning 0.00001%. I forget the last time I looked at my savings statement. It's even a money market now. I have my money in a money market. It's nothing, nothing. You can't even get 1% in the money market now. Even if you have a high balance, it's insane. So anyways, you still have the 8,000 in your savings. This won't pay it off. So what do you do? What could you do? Learn how to take the $8,000 and turn it into something to get somewhere with the $25,000 debt. Now, are you gonna get somewhere fast? Are you gonna pay it off right away? Is it a day, in a week, in a month? No, you're gonna find a plan of action to do it to just chunk it out. And it's through trading. Now, the strategy that I teach, the one that I trade, is gaps. Now, there's a reason that I trade gaps. Well, there's many reasons, okay? One of the biggest reasons is that there's momentum in stocks that gap. And momentum means a stock is going to run. And I short stocks. You can buy long gaps, too. But I like to short them because the momentum that happens in things when they get sold off or shorted happens quick and fast, typically in the morning. So the other reason that I love gaps as well is because the moves happen quickly. So you could be up money very fast instead of waiting, waiting, waiting all day for something to go to the target. These morning gaps can work fast. I wanted to go over the one I did last week, which was actually the play of the week, the stock of the week, the gap of the week. It was BRCM. It worked twice, twice in a row. Very unusual, very odd that this happens, but good enough to go over and review. It happened back here last week on Wednesday and Thursday. So it was one of these, no, it was Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm sorry. Tuesday and Wednesday, it was the uh, 23rd and the 24th. And it was one of these unusual things where you know, you get a momentum move in something twice, twice in a row. So let's just look at this scenario. This was the play on day one with BRCM. So it was Tuesday. All right, it was the 23rd. It gapped, opened, fell hard. It, it didn't swoosh, okay, but it really had a very big move that happened very quickly down in here. So what do you do? You wait for a rally back and you look for a setup in the trade. So here was the entry in BRCM. And if anyone has any questions, you can write them in the room too. I'm looking at questions. I have time to answer questions. Now this train set up right before 10 o'clock, which is an ideal time for me, anywhere between 9.30 and 10. And I actually even gave us a cushion of the stop right over here. Okay, I didn't put it really tight over here. I actually gave us a cushion over this topping tail right back here, knowing that it shouldn't violate that and it actually didn't. And it retested it one, two, three times, boom, you're in, okay? And this is a nice momentum move it has. Target was 31. And here it almost got to the target. Tried one more time. Here you got to get out because it's 1030. Nice trade though that happened in 30 minutes and beautiful move down. And it got within pennies of the target. So the entry time was 953. The price is 3172. Stop is over 3184. The risk was 12 cents. So you can risk whatever you want. I'm using $360 here to show you what an advanced trader uh, would do. All right, now you don't have to risk $360. You could have risked $50, $70. You don't have to take this much. The risk to reward payout is the same. 
5.58 if it goes to the target. Exits 3105. Total profit risking 360 is 2010. All right. But let's just say you only wanted to risk $120, okay, which would have been 1,000 shares risking 12 cents because that's where the stop has to be. All right. You still would have had a nice trade here, only taking 1,000 shares. You would have made $680. It's still 5.5 times the amount risk was made in profit. So you're turning $360 into over $2,000 in less than 30 minutes. Now, why is this important? Okay. Because you're investing your money, even though you're shorting, even though you're trading, even though you're not buying a certificate of deposit or a CD or something like that, or actually buying the stock outright because you're using leverage to day trade, you're investing in this trade whatever money you can afford to invest. And then you are taking the trade and you are getting the move in it. So you were investing essentially the $360 to make $2,000. This is a good trade. This is a good investment. Okay. So this is going to help you chunk away at some of, for example, the credit card debt, unsecured debt, or even mortgage debt if you have it. So let's look at day two in BRCM. <laughs> really, day two was actually even better than day one. It went full on here. This is the kind of thing that, you know, I typically look at gaps and I rate gaps in the morning. This was a very aggressive trade that I made in here. Uh, a lot of people would not have done this that are day traders, but I rated the gap. It rated according to my rating system. So I did it and I took the trade and it set up and it was actually a huge play. So look, drop down here in the morning, day two, second play in the same stock, same stock symbol, came up on the gap list, same thing. Rally back up, set up in here, take the trade, stop over the base. Nice drop all the way down, flush into itself right down through here and actually it went beyond what the target was. The first target was really 2750 and went down and broke even more and went all the way down to really almost the whole number. So the entry was at 942, price was 2806. This was a nice little stop here too for this price point. This is a good good risk amount, 14 cents. So on this trade it was $420 and the exit was 2710. Total profit 2880. Again, very good risk to reward. I typically take trades I'm looking for four to five on the low end, eight to 10 on the high end. These were nice trades and they were, didn't set up right away as even immediately. You, you didn't even have to be crazy aggressive on them. You could have waited, waited at least 10 minutes to take them, situate yourself, make sure that you got it, make sure it's good. And again, you're turning $420 into $2880 in less than 30 minutes. And look at this little beautiful formation and you have all the moving averages squishing down. So I use my moving averages as a sys to tell me that the trade is going in the right direction. I don't really live and die by any of these things, but when you look at this, you can see how the bend in this and all the moving averages is so nice. And this type of hilly formation is, is actually a setup for a short. It's like a rounded hill where it falls off a cliff. Beautiful play. Again, I'm looking to short. So you're investing your money, whatever money you want. It doesn't have to be $420. You could have risked approximately the same if you could have taken 1,000 shares. And you could have risked 140. Uh, JRH has asked a question. You need a lot in your account for these. Well, let's just look. This price point of this stock is 2806. So let's just say you wanted to take 1,000 shares. You would have needed 28,000 in buying power. If you wanted to take 3,000 shares, you would have needed approximately 84,000 in buying power. So even to do this trade, you wouldn't even need 100,000 in buying power. When you trade, when you day trade, you get leverage with a broker. You don't need the cash value exactly of the price point. This is a beautiful thing about day trading. As a day trader, you get leverage. So you need 28,000 to take 1,000 shares in buying power, not in cash stock. I'm not actually purchasing the stock outright or shorting the stock of the cost of it outright. There's leverage used in this, and it depends on the broker that you go to. So you don't need even to do this trade here and risk $420, even 100,000 in BP. You could have done it with 84,000. So that's a solid, solid good trade. So again, you're trading with leverage. Leverage is a day trader. In fact, this is a very interesting topic. I talk to people all the time that are traders. People tend to gravitate towards different kinds of trading. There's all kinds of trading out there. The amazing thing is that equities trading, first of all, you can trade on leverage. There's different leverage requirements for every type of trading you do. 
All right, you have to check with the broker. However, that being said, the money that you can make trading equities, the risk to reward in trades, if you know how to trade correctly, far exceeds the payout in anything else that exists. The only difference is people struggle with, you know, figuring out what to do. Well, all they have to do is learn it, okay? People aren't sure which stock to trade. You can determine that by having a system to help you pick which stock to trade. It's really not difficult if you know what to look for. It's just that many people don't know what to look for, okay? In fact, I talked to someone the other week, and he, he said he does options. And I said, why do you do options? And he had a crazy amount of money. I said, what the heck are you doing options for? You should be trading equities. And he said, because I don't have to get the direction right. And I said, what? I was started laughing. Learn how to get the direction right. You just learn it. Because there's so much money in this stuff. All you have to do is learn it. Okay? Once you learn what to do, it's easy. For me, trading is easy now because I've been doing it for years. Now, if you learn from someone good, it doesn't have to take you that long. Oh, you do have to learn it, though, okay? And when you get the direction in these stocks correct, they run. Look at this. As soon as they hit and trigger in the morning, you're up money. They never back up against you as soon as they hit. And if they do, you're out. Boom. You're out. And we're going to go over the results from the last week, too. I, I have them in here coming up. So let's just look at the Golden Gap two-day results. Just for two days, this was last week. Profit made in two days, amount risked in total was 420 and 360, so 780. Amount made in profit in the account, 4890, 4890. So almost five thousand dollars. So you risked approximately eight hundred to make almost five. That's pretty good. So the investment paid off six plus times the amount invested, which was seven hundred eighty dollars. Time investment was an hour, and you could pay down your credit card. Let's just say you paid it down four thousand, and you kept eight ninety in the account. So your balance now is twenty one thousand on that twenty five thousand dollar credit card, and your monthly payments now are not going to be six hundred anymore. They're going to be basically five hundred now because you paid it down about twenty percent. Okay, so they're going to be roughly five hundred dollars. You could keep paying six hundred. Now you're paying six hundred, the same amount you've been paying. You're paying hundred dollars every month in the principal, and you have an extra cushion of eight ninety in the trading account, and you keep trading. Okay. This is just two days. This isn't even a week, okay? Now, again, you don't have to risk $800. Risk what you're comfortable risking. The risk to reward payout is the same no matter how much you risk. It's, it, it's a good investment for your money to start chunking away at this debt, getting somewhere with it. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep outlaying $600 a month every single month, not paying down the principal. So the conclusion is what? By taking the money you have and trading, you could chunk away your debt faster than just paying the monthly minimum payments, okay? And instead of using the cash on hand to pay down a portion of the debt, you can invest it in the market. Because if you had $8,000 in savings, instead of putting it in a trading account, you could put it in a trading account or you could just pay it down. But once you pay down the $25,000 with the eight grand, it's gone. Then you have nothing to invest to actually earn more. So using the money you have to trade to earn more can help you rid yourself of the debt faster. Not just paying it down in chunks, but lowering the overall balance and minimum payments, which again is a great idea. So it's really about having conviction, conviction in yourself. This is above and beyond, okay, trading now. Uh, conviction is believing in yourself, believing you can do something different, believing you can change your life by doing something different, believing you can get out of debt, believing that failure is not an option, believing that you can trade successfully, which by the way, many, many people want to trade or think about trading and they don't do it successfully. Why? There's many reasons, but mostly because they don't believe in themselves. I'm doing it because I believe in myself. And when I started out and I was losing at the beginning, I found a way to keep pushing on because I believed in myself. And guess what? I figured it out. And now I'm doing it. And now I'm teaching people for, you know, all over the place, you know? When you have conviction, you are claiming your own power. The power that exists for you to make the necessary money you need, not only to survive, but to thrive in your life. Otherwise, you're stuck in this prison of debt and there is really no way out anymore. The idea of you know, reinvesting into your home and having the home value go up and even getting 100% LTV and all these kinds of crazy loans they did is never going to happen again. So you really have to actually pay it off with real cash, not borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. And banks are not lowering people's rates anymore. They won't do it. They don't care. So the reality is you've got to find a way. There's only one way, earn more. 
earn more money. You could work two, three, four, five, six jobs, or you could work an extra part-time, one hour, two hours a day trading in the market to start to chunk away at it. So it's about adding up your way to a solution. You've, you've got to figure it out. It's not going away. There's, you've got to do something. It's time for you to be happy and full of life again, like this guy, when he had no cares in the world and he never worried about debt, and the idea of debt didn't even make any sense to him. Um, and that was a long time ago. But he was happy, and it's time for people to be happy in general. In general, people to be happy and, and really start to enjoy their own lives. It's time to not just make goals, but also take action towards the goals. It's, we can talk about what our goals are, but if we don't take any actions towards the goals, then we're not going to see any results. And the situation will be the same. We can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about how we want to get out of debt, but if we have no plan of action to do it and do not take action towards the plan, even if we have a plan, we're not going to get out of the situation. So learn how to take the money you have and invest it so you can pay off debt. There are really three steps. I was thinking about this the other night. I actually woke up in the middle of the night in bed and I realized this, that becoming successful trading is really a three, three-step process. Number one is learning. This, this is absolutely 100% number one. The three-step process of becoming successful trading is, is, first of all, you have to learn. This learning exists. This is number one, and you've got to learn what to do to make the money and how to do it. You have to learn. You have to learn taking a class or learn from a mentor or learn from a trader that's doing it well. You have, you have to learn. There's, there's no way around it. And you can read all the books you want in the world, and they're not going to teach you really how to trade. All right? There's some good information in books you really got to learn from a, a, from a mentor, from a person. So learning is number one. Number two is doing. Actually doing, 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 doing it. So you learn how to do it, and then you do it. You do it. You open up a trading account, and you press the buttons, and by golly, you do it. You trade. You trade and you see, yes, oh my gosh, I can actually take money out of the market. Will you lose in some trades? Yes. But in the process, you're going to be doing it and you're going to see the results and you're going to see that you can pull money out of the market and you're going to start to have more conviction, conviction in yourself and your own ability to get yourself out of the situation that you're in, whatever it happens to be. So you've got to learn and then you've got to do. And you never stop learning, by the way. The learning is the first big step. The, the biggest part of the learning comes at the beginning. And then you're going to do. And you're going to see it while you're doing it. And then after that is the last, last step. And I forgot to put number three here. But it's actually knowing. Knowing. It's actually when you get up and you know. You know that the market's going to give you a good gap. You know that you're going to make the money you need to make every week. You know that if you lose money in one trade, you're going to get the next one. You know the market's going to pay you consistently. You know you can do it. You know how to do it. You believe in yourself. You believe in the market. You believe in your strategy. You're in a knowing. This is where I am right now in my trading. It's a knowing. And if I wasn't in this place of knowing, knowing, knowing that I could never teach people successfully, let alone trade live with them. So I'm, I'm in a place of knowing, and this is the, the last place to be, and this is a place where then you live. You live in this place of knowing. It's like, you know, someone says to you, well, is the sun shining or is it dark out right now? Well, it's 4.58 Eastern time, and I'm looking outside my window, and the sun is shining gloriously, and there's a breeze blowing. I know that, and I know that when I get up tomorrow, I'm going to get a good gap in the market because it's earning season, and I know I'm going to make money. So, you know, there's just a knowing that comes once you get to this stage of trading and the three-step three process. So to trade successfully, you need to learn a strategy and you need to follow a system. Why? Because structure is important. Trading is not gambling. It is about having a structure. So the structure is the strategy. The strategy is the reason for you taking the trade, which for me is gaps. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. What is a system? It's a plan of action you will use to pull the money out of the market successfully. How are you going to take the trades? Why are you going to trade it? Which stock are you going to pick? So the golden gap system, which is what I trade and teach, focuses on a trading strategy that short stocks a gap. The 26-point rating system is the plan of action to follow to pick the best stock to trade. And the object is to look for a gap that will have a rating of 20 plus points. I'm not trying to find perfection here. Uh, it's very difficult to do. My system is very tough. 20 plus is like perfection for me. If the gap rates 20 or more, I will short it. So you're looking for that. Highly rated gaps have a solid risk to reward payout. 
four to five on the low end and eight to 10 on the high end. And I showed you conservative examples there uh, from the past week of, you know, four to five in the low end, it was about five to six. So the class I teach is called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock of the day. What is this? It's where you're going to take the trade, where you're going to get in and press a button, and where you're going to put the stop, like when I went over in the examples. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. This is how I trade. I trade based on price action, based on technical analysis. I'm reading the charts. I'm reading the charts of the stocks and reading the prices of the gap and where they're gapping every morning. So the 26 point checklist, it tells you what to look for. I need to look for this, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. I go through the checklist every single morning. There's no getting away from this. I'm very, very strict with myself. This is something that there's, you must do. And I've been doing this for a long time and I still go through my checklist and make sure that I have everything that it rates over 20. And checklists work. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart in a stock to make the correct decision. So you're not getting dissuaded by things you hear in the news, stuff you hear on, on TV, on the internet. You're focusing on the price of the things you're looking at in the rating system. And having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias. That's the purpose of the checklist. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. What is your goal? Your goal is to make money. And if one of your goals is to pay off debt with the money you make trading, then having a checklist is vital. A checklist is basically a plan of action. So the Golden Gap is a complete system to use to trade. The course is a two full day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free, so as soon as you pay for the class one time, you can retake it as many times as you need to after the fact and review. Gaps tell you the right direction if you know how to read the chart. And here I, I put a gap, actually this was a bullish gap, this is Facebook. I actually bought Facebook today. Um, and I typically really don't even hardly do bullish gaps. I prefer the downs, but Facebook was a buy last week when it gapped up into no man's land. And I called it as a buy. And again, I think very few people made that call, but I knew it was a highly rated bullish gap and it was a beautiful play and rallied the next day and rallied today. Facebook is higher. Facebook is going to hit over new, brand new all-time highs this year and boop over $50 before it can even breathe with a bullish market, which we're in, by the way. So, you know, reading gaps and rating gaps where they're gapping in the morning tells you the direction. What do I do with this? Buy it or short it? And that's the beautiful thing about having a rating system. So what is it about gaps that makes them so profitable? Why, again, are they so profitable? Because of the momentum and that's the reason to trade them. And what creates the momentum? Large institutional money. So how can understanding how to trade gaps make it possible to read charts and trade profitably? Because this is your goal to trade profitably, of course, to make money. Because gaps are created with large institutional money. And that is what makes the gap. Who do I mean? Banks, hedge funds. Those people are either buying the stock and pushing it up like Facebook or shorting the stock and pushing it down like BRCM. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. And I never, ever, 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 ever trade against that. And I don't advise any trader to. I do not do anything else unless it's in the direction of the big money. That's the way you really limit losses and make money trading. So you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you can get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. This is why they're so great. There's a sense of urgency that happens in the gap. People are forced to do something. So an action is being forced by participants in the stock. For example, if people are long the stock, the stock gaps down like the BRCM, $2 or something. People that are long the stock now are up less money or actually down. What are they going to do? They have to do something. Crap. What are they going to do? An action is being forced. So they sell out of it. And that is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. I'm using the short as an example right now, BRCM. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you are trading on the side of the power. You are with the power, not against it. 
you must be with the power. You can't be against it. And if you don't know how to determine what that power is in a chart, then you need to learn. Because as a professional trader, as a part-time trader, as an investor, as anything, anything you all that you do, you put your money in the market. You do not want to be against any power money. You will lose over time. You will. There's just no way about it. And I think this is one of the reasons why people, again, need to learn and understand directional bias. It is 100% possible. It is created in the gaps. KY is asking a great question. Would I agree that gaps are filled over time? Absolutely not. That is false. It doesn't work. No. I only trade gaps in the direction of the gap. Gaps do not fill over time. That is false. In fact, once we're done here, if you guys want to come over and enter my trading room, um, or if I have time even here now, because we're done almost a little bit early here, let me finish this up. We'll look at some charts. Gaps do not fill themselves. I can show you about a bazillion examples. That, that is the way that most people trade gaps. That is the way that most people trade gaps. I'm so glad you asked me that, KY. It doesn't work. I'm really the only person out here that is teaching gaps in this matter. Uh, you know, really, this is something special here. Gaps don't fill themselves. I'm not trading against the power of money. So let's just look here at last week's stats. July 22nd was MCD, MSF, didn't work, MCD did. I underlined the ones I did. These are the calls I made in the trading room. I didn't do every call that I made. Sometimes I don't do every call that I make, but I did the ones that are underlined. I did BRCM Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, I did Crocs, which was a loser. Pot worked and I didn't do it. I did Microsoft, which worked, and FB. I didn't do, but it worked, and I called it. And Friday was Crest, which was a nice, beautiful, fantastic <laughs> winner. And I called EXP, but I didn't do it. So last week was a good week. There you have it. So nice moves in the gaps last week, just to give you an idea of just one week's worth of picks. So learn how to make money in the stock market, because if you do, you can take the money that you have in your savings and turn it into something more. Otherwise, you're just getting rid of whatever debt you have or letting it earn interest in a very small regard in a checking or savings account. Remember, change is so important in our lives, just like the seasons, just like the seasons and how fruits grow. Change is important. If we don't change, we die. Okay? Dennis is saying, lost me. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Dennis lost me there. So train to change your life. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's going to be this weekend, August 3rd and 4th, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The cost is $24.99. Contact me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you'd like more information on the class. Can everybody hear me? Kathy or Kevin, Dennis is saying you lost me. Let me know if you guys can hear me. So your path to success is a Golden Gap course. I am doing a special for August, a combo class with the Trends class and the Golden Gap class. And the Trends course is a course on how to read trends in stock charts. It's Monday and Tuesday from 1 to 5, August 11th and 12th. The cost is $99.99 separately, but I'm doing a special. If you buy and want to do both classes, you get half off the Trends class. So the total will be $29.99 for two classes. And again, the dates are August 3rd and 4th for the GAP class. That alone is $24.99. And if you want to do both classes, it's $29.99. You get half off. It's a savings of $499. And you're going to learn a lot of information. And guess what? Facebook is in my trends class. I wrote it in July. I have to go back now every time I do this trends class and update it in the charts. Facebook did a corrective GAP. Facebook was in a downtrend. And I teach how to look at these things in the trend class. But the Golden Gap class is where I teach how to rate and determine the directional bias of gaps, and it's very important. So look great, feel great, be proud of what you do and who you are. Be proud of what you do and who you are. I'm proud of what I do, and I'm proud of who I am, and I'm proud that I trade the market and I teach people how to do it. You know, this is a very challenging thing to do to teach people how to trade, and I'm doing it. So thank you very much. I'm going to quick bring up my charts. We have some time here, and we're going to go over KY's question about gaps, and maybe we will look at 